Joining me right now is the aforementioned Antonio Cromarty live on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Antonio? It's doing good. What's going on, Rich? You tell me. You're 8-1. Man, it feels good to be 8-1. So what's going on there in Arizona, Antonio? What, 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 to what do you attribute this, this eight wins in the first nine games start? You know, honestly, I just think it's the process. Uh, you know, no one's looking ahead. Everyone's treating uh, every single game like it's the most important game. Uh, you know, and that's how we're treating uh, the whole entire season. You know, we're not trying to look ahead. And uh, we're just focused on our, the opponent that we have to play that week. And uh, we're treating it like it's a playoff game every single week. Well, this week is almost like one. If you think about it, you're taking on the team that's closest to you in the conference standings. And if everything plays out, uh, this, this might be for a home field advantage at some point down the line in January. Are you looking at it that way, Antonio Cromartie? Um, I mean, definitely. I mean, it's an NFC game. It's a, it's a conference game, and it's a game that uh, hold, holds, a lot of, holds a lot of weight to it. And uh, from a standpoint of looking at it, I mean, you, that's how you have to look at it. You got a 7-2 and two team and an 8-1 and one team that's playing. Um, and it's basically for teams, you know, who's going to have the head-to-head matchup. So, uh, for us, we just got to make sure that we're doing the things that we're trying to do and make sure we control what we control on the football field. Who's getting Megatron this week, you or Patrick? I don't know yet. I don't know. You know, I don't really find out until, until Friday. Okay. Do you want him? Oh, man, you know, I take the matchup any day. I, I mean, I love it. Uh, uh, I love the matchup, you know, with, when it comes to the number one receiver. It's just a point of just going out there and playing at a high level and ignoring that the other guy on the opposite side is going to try to come out and play at a high level, too. So it's, a, it's like a challenge. So what is it like to play in this defense? And I ask that lightly because, you know, you played for Rex Ryan, who is as exotic as they come. But it's like Todd Bowles is pushing the pedal to the metal. You guys are blitzing more than any other team in the NFL. What's it like to play in this defense, Antonio? Man, I, to be honest with you, Rich, it's, uh, it's almost the same, to be honest with you. Uh, playing for a Rex Ryan defense and this defense, he puts the corners on the island by themselves uh, and, and tell the corners to, to go out and hold their own. You know, and that's what, something that me and Pat's been trying to do this whole entire season, along with the guys in, uh, in you know, the middle of the field with uh, Tyron Matthew, Rashad Johnson. Jonah Jefferson, our young guy, uh, they are they are Buchanan, you know. And uh, so what's who's, what's really who's that, having a, one of the better seasons for us is also Gerard Power. So you know, we just put all all our guys, all our guys got faith in each other, and uh, you know, we're just making sure that you know, from a standpoint of what what Ty want to do, uh, we want to make sure we go out there and excel and do what we're supposed to do because you know he gives us a game plan, he gives us you know the things that the offense is going to do. And we just got to make sure that we trust in what he's coaching and his coaching staff is coaching also. Antonio Cromartie of the 8-1 and one Arizona Cardinals uh, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So did you see your former quarterback light it up on Monday Night Football, Antonio? Oh, man, I was so, I'm so happy for him, too. Uh, I, watched, I watched the whole game, you know, and uh, I, I mean, to me, he did a heck of a job. And that's something that you, you saw him mark his first two years. Uh, you know, and I think right now the system that he's in is more of a cottage scheme that he's used to uh, with a fast-paced moving offense. And, and then the other thing that he has, he has weapons around him, something that he really didn't have uh, in New York his last, you know, two years. You know, his, his, uh, the last year that he was there, he ended up getting hurt. But he didn't have the weapons that he has right now uh, his last two years. So, I mean, I think he's mature more. As a, as a quarterback and as a man off the field also. Well, and, and, and many people are saying, and I'm one of them, to be very honest with you, that, that Sanchez didn't have the proper uh, coaching footing in New York and that and he didn't get a fair shake because of that. Would you agree with that assessment, Antonio? I agree with that. When, I, when you say about the coaching, uh, I mean, you got to think, I think Mark, you know, he had Braun Schoenheimer, uh, you know, he had you know three. He had three di different uh, offensive coordinators during his, during his round there. So it wasn't consistent. Everything was not being consistent for him. So and he was always getting taught something new. Uh, you know, in this past year, he had the time to, to heal his whole his whole body. You know, and get his mind right and understand what he wants to try to do. And uh, I mean, I, I think he's fell into the right system over there with the Eagles and Chip Kelly. Well, and the Eagles, uh, for them to make the playoffs, which everyone is expecting them to do, clearly their backup, which is what Mark Sanchez technically is, will have to take them there. And the same now is uh, the case in Arizona, Antonio. It's now Drew Stanton's team to move forward. Uh, and Bruce Arians said that you guys can win a Super Bowl with him. What, what do you say on that subject? I mean, I believe 
believe in playing. I mean, it's just also at the same time, like I said earlier, uh, it's all about still res- respecting the process of uh, going in every single week, putting in the work and going into the game and only focusing on that game. Um, I, I think, you know, we can win with Drew. We have went been winning with Drew when uh, Carson went down before. Uh, you know, it's just a point of, you know, the, the only defense side of the ball, uh, we know what we have to do. Uh, you know, we can't control anything that's going on the offense side of the ball. Uh, we just got to make sure that we don't allow points and we get a, a Drew in our offense as many opportunities as we can uh, coming in these uh, next seven weeks. Is John Brown the fastest player on the team, Antonio Cromartie? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I might still hold that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm asking for. I thought I was asking the right person here. <laughs> no, but I, I love the kid. Uh, I mean, he's a, he comes to work every single day. Uh, you would never, you would never think that he was a rookie. Uh, the way that he carries himself, uh, he comes to work every single day. He's in the, he's in the film room. He's studying, you know, with his, with, with the receivers and also with the quarterbacks. Uh, and you don't, you don't really get much from, from him. You know, on a practice so he just comes to work and come to work uh, like he's supposed to, uh, and just and, and tries to make sure he's doing his best and I'll try to understand the offense as much as possible. How difficult is it to see Carson Palmer go through this, Antonio? It's difficult because you're looking at a guy that was probably having one of his best years of his career since, what, 04 when he tore his ACL the first time uh, against the Steelers in the playoffs. So you, you're looking at a guy who was redeeming himself from um, and getting back to what everyone knew what Carson can do. Yeah, he wasn't turning the ball over. He was completing the pass that we needed him to complete. Uh, you know, he was rated the number one quarterback on third downs. Uh, of the uh, uh, completing positions, so I mean, it's just a point of what guys is uh, going out every single every single weekend was uh, going out of work, and uh, and that's what we expected from him. Uh, and I know it's hard for him because you know I think he was just getting to getting into the, his his comfort zone and getting, getting with the guys and just ready to go play. Antonio Cromartie, thanks for calling in. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. The Rich Eisen Show weekdays at noon Eastern. On audience.